So good evening, everyone. This meeting is now being recorded, so everyone should have seen something flash, a message flash up on their screen, let, notifying them the meeting is being recorded. Great. Okay. So calling to order 1216 meeting pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. I just need a time. Yes, it is 6.35. Sorry about that. All right. So we have some meeting minutes to approve. Um, so let's do that first. Um, we are approving the 10-13-2021, the 10-27-2021, and the 11-4-2021 minutes. So I move to approve those minutes and looking for a second. Second. Great. Any discussion? Any comments? Okay, then I'll just go ahead and do a roll call vote. So Yvonne, how do you vote? Okay, great. Uh, Hala, how do you vote? Lord, I. Okay, and Irv, how do you vote? I. Miller is I, so that uh, the, the three, um, meeting minutes pass unanimously. And so let's uh, go ahead and review our agenda for tonight. And possibly we'll see if we're gonna maybe move some things around, but we'll start uh, with our public comment. We do not have any presentations this evening. Um, in our action and discussion items, we will uh, review our etiquette. And then I had planned for us to delve right into the strategic plan proposal. We'll have a funding update, a black census update, and then depending on time, a debrief of the reckoning in Boston screening and uh, a debrief of the Evanston symposium. And so, uh, and then we'll have another public comment period, member reports and uh, upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules, and then um, we'll be finished. So let's see here. Um, are there any questions about the agenda? Oh, hello, Dr. Shabazz, nice to see you. <laughs> Welcome. Dr. Shabazz, we just approved some minutes and if there are no questions on the agenda, we're gonna move um, to public comment. All right. So I will read our public comment statement. During the public comment period, one of the, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the, of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will be listening and taking note. So if you uh, would like to make a public comment, please go ahead and use the raise hand function. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna let Will Norris in. Hi everyone, um, I'm here again. <clears throat> um, I'm actually, uh, I'm not feeling very well, so I'm gonna hop off in a minute. Um, and just wait for the recording of this of this discussion. Um, but I just wanted to mention that I reached out to, I think, um, all members this week by email, um, hoping to talk to people um, maybe this coming week if anyone has availability. Um, just just by Zoom is fine, or we can we can talk about it. So um, please uh, keep an eye out for those emails. Um, 
and that's that's really all. Thanks. Thank you, Will. Yes, Jennifer. <clears throat> Thank you, Will. It would be um, great if it was. My only concern is that if the public records request is called, anything conversation that you have with any of the members would be um, would be open to the subject to the open meeting law or the I'm sorry, not open meeting law, but to the public records request. So if I could somehow be CC'd on those types of communications, that would be great. All right, can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, thank you for, I didn't I didn't know that was important to you to, I didn't know that was important. I'm happy going forward to um, CC you on this. Thank you. Great, thank you, Will. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to speak in public comment? All right. So let me just go ahead and pull up the ropes quickly for a review. Just taking a moment to review the ropes. And if there are no questions on that, we can move on. So given, okay, let's see. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll move right into the strategic plan proposal. Um, can I just have a show of hands for who had a chance to review this um, in advance of the meeting? Okay, not okay, good. Thanks. That's good to know, Yvonne. It's helpful, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we, as you know, at, at the last meeting, I proposed um, a more limited strategic plan. And then I had this uh, wonderful opportunity to go to Evanston this past weekend. Um, and really learned so much about the local reparations, uh, you know, the various models and the language and all of that kind of stuff. And so it was an opportunity for me to really fill out this strategic plan proposal that I'm bringing forward. Um, and so I'm gonna pull it up on the screen and then uh, we can go ahead and just open it up for discussion. Let's see here. Give me one second here. And can everybody see that now? Okay, great. Um, let me see if I can just make this slideshow. All right. Actually, hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to sort of manage the various <laughs> levels of... <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, so we can just go ahead and open it up for discussion. If you, if you want to look at this yourself, as opposed to on the screen here, it's in the packet. So if you wanna pull it up on your own device, you can also do that. It is in the meeting packet. Um, so I'd like to just go ahead and open it up. Um, if I'm assuming that folks, most of us had a chance to look at it. And so instead of re-reviewing the whole thing right now, um, unless somebody would like me to go through it, I'm happy to do that. So just give me a hand, raise a hand if you'd like me to just quickly go through it. Okay, good. All right, so... <laughs> Let's open it up for discussion. Let's see. 
Okay. Um, well, I'll give just a little bit more background here. Um, so I am proposing that we um, ask the town council to extend our charge um, to June 2000, is that 2023 that I'm trying to say or 2022 actually? Um, it is 2000. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, I had it right. Okay. Um, and so this will give us the opportunity to work in, in flexible phases. Um, we could meet once or twice per month as a group and then form subcommittees, um, which will allow us to work within the open meeting law. Um, and then I have three phases here that I'm recommending. So phase one is the data collection phase. So this is where we could bring expert testimony here at public meetings. Um, we could expand on our historical and modern research, including oral histories, collaborate with our schools and anchor institutions. And then you'll see there's a community engagement and communications proposal here that we would um, have various levels of engagement. And then, of course, the foundation pieces that we've been talking about all along. So strengthening our Black stakeholder authority, developing a reparations finance authority, um, and I can talk a little bit about that. Um, and then really, I guess the one piece that I want to point out that I took back from Evanston that's really important is um, reparations for Amherst started the research and um, we could call that historical research that we've done the, the harm report essentially. So it begins to identify the harm in our community. Um, and I would recommend that we work to expand that. What we'll want to do is also develop an impact report so that we can basically look at the way that the harm, what impact has that harm had on our community? And that allows us to begin to design a reparation program for, for, for the town because um, without sort of that narrowly tailored harm report and being able to link it to an impact, um, we, it, that's that's how we're we'll be able to sort of legally move through the process of making reparations. So um, we can talk more about that. But phase two, um, we would develop the draft plan. So this is where um, we would determine eligibility and criteria using the harm report. Uh, we would determine possible remedies via BAM and community feedback, um, and then develop the process for making individual and collective reparations. And then we could, as I said here, in we can work phase two and three together um, in identifying funding sources. So, all right, I think Dr. Shabazz had his hand up. So I'm gonna just check back. Yep, go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Well, no, you should finish your your review with just when discussion comes I'm ready to Are you ready to go okay <laughs> yeah so um you know uh again being in Evanston this weekend really opened my eyes even more to um the need for our community to sort of so in less than a year we moved from a community petition to having this reparations fund and committee. And it was a very linear process. And what I'm recommending is that we now sort of allow the process to blossom. And we um, begin that, uh, that movement toward engaging the community um, and really engaging professionals as we need them to help us to develop uh, a good and, and, and solid reparations uh, plan for the community. Um, so that's it. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I, I'm gonna open it up for discussion. And if you have any questions, please, this would be a good time. So go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, so I um, also return uh, from the same meeting. Uh, with a renewed sense of um, of confidence in uh, in this strategic update, 
I think that um, we need to move from this, these kinds of bulleted points to really sort of drafting a letter to the council or something that um, in a little more of a narrative that just explains the rationale, explains the, the reasoning and, and can detail, you know, this, this new plan of action with the additional uh, amount of time, but the, uh, you know, but the need to, uh, this certainly fleshes out what we'll do with the extra time, but, you know, the rationale, I think is pretty clear that um, there's not, not enough time with, um, uh, again, the extraordinary conditions that, that we meet under, uh, that we're able to do this work under uh, Delta, Omicron, everything else going on, uh, that, uh, that certainly um, has uh, ha has had effects on um, on some of the you know affecting the timetable and also just that again from past experience of committees like the community safety working group so you turn in a report in June if you're disbanded if that's your your out date then you know there's no built-in time for consideration for discussion with the with counselors, for answering questions, for coming back and being able to, uh, uh, you know, do any additional work. It's like you're you're one and done. You've got your one report out, and 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 you're done. And we and we disband. So even with with that in mind, uh, I think there's there's a need for this additional time and an additional schema where. Um, yes, we produced the report sometime between July or whatever the dates were in here, but then there's time remaining in our in our charge, in our activities as a, uh, uh, a public body of the town. There's time to then engage, to respond, to be able to help in the uh, in the setup, in the in the moving forward of of what we actually plan. So I think if that can be developed into a one paragraph or a very brief narrative uh, explaining that, have these bulleted points with the phases saying what we'll actually do over the course of this expanded time that uh, we should, uh, I, I think I'd be happy to, uh, to make a motion in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Would anyone else like to? I think, and you know, I appreciate um, Dr. Shabazz that we're focusing really on whether or not this body would like to direct me as the chair to move through a process of requesting this extra time from the town council per the charter. Um, there are certain kind of ways that that has to happen. So um, we can we can move toward a motion here tonight to do that, but I'd like to hear what other folks um, think about it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there's one question about whether to extend it, and then there's the actual phases and, and the meat of what's in here, um, which we can hash out, not necessarily even, you know, all of that tonight. Yes, Sivan. I think it's important for us to, um, I think it's really great to extend the charge of the committee. Um, I don't know what the protocols are for that. And I guess Jen would know more about that, what those protocols would mean. Um, I also feel like I'm not sure, like some of us on this committee, me included, where, you know, we knew there was a, an ending. There was a you know, the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing with the committee. So um, I feel like um, that should also be uh, considered. It might be that there are, it would be nice if everyone on this committee continued, but I feel like some folks may not be able to continue. I'm not saying I'm one of those people, but I think we need to think about that. And we need to think about recruitment and retainment because um, we need to have um, a full committee, you know?
Go ahead, Hala. Sorry, I lost myself, so I couldn't unmute myself. <laughs> oh, you lost yourself. That's deep. <laughs> Just for a second. <laughs> um, I also, I'm in agreement with slowing it down um, because in our capitalist, um, certain gatekeeping things that aren't necessarily in our culture is the quick, 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 speed, speed, speed. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That being said, I also worry that part of what happens to us is sometimes things are so dragged out that all of a sudden, but it, I, I like what we're doing here. It's only adding another year and there's um, a lot of action um, woven into it. So I'm, I'm, I would vote to adopt this strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you, Hala. Irv, would you like to add anything? I think that everything you put in there, I would agree with that, you know, the first vote is to vote for the extension of time and then pursue that via the um, legislative process of the town. Secondly, when I look through all of this, um, the thing that jumps out at me is uh, we get to a point where we, and I can't remember which phase it is, where we develop criteria for who would be eligible. And that is concerning to me because it, it, it would mean that we would be going through all of these phases and getting all this data and information and funding sources and et cetera. And then we decide, then we start having a conversation as to who is eligible. And that to me is uh, troublesome because that is a going to be an intense conversation amongst all of us and also the community. Uh, and it has important implications for in terms of uh, the other work that we, have, we would have already done. So it seems to me that that conversation should take place sooner rather than later. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I agree that that is going to be uh, one of the more challenging pieces of our work um, and really tying that harm report with the impact report and working with um, folks who have some experience um, with this and, you know, continuing to work with Evanston with respect to how they're making um, those ties. Um, yes, Irv. I just wanted to add one other thing. We have to remember that uh, African-Americans or people who identify as African-American for the 2020 census, that we are less than 10%, around 8% of the population here in Amherst. And, and, um, and I would assume that that percentage goes down as the uh, as you go back in time. Uh, so, it, and and that adds more urgency to what I'm uh, why I'm saying what I'm saying is that how many people are we talking about? We're and 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 the assumption is that if we're about eight percent now, what were we um, in the fifties or the you know forties, fifties, but before that, what what percentage were we? Were, in other words, is the, what numbers are we talking about? Are we talking about 10 or 100? And we need to know that, in my estimation, before we start developing other kinds of things, uh, especially in relationship to other additional funding sources uh, uh, and, um, and other things you have outlined in here. Uh, so I'm guessing what I'm doing is I'm wanting to make a case that we tackle the eligibility um, sooner than later. Ivan. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. Um, I think that um, I'm certainly uh, the things this proposal is uh, very well done. And I think it's really great for us to uh, vote on it and approve it and move forward. Um, I do know that uh, there was a person who was 
uh, sent a letter in. I don't, I don't know who that person was. I think Jennifer forwarded it to the committee that was talking about um, the inequities in the school system and how there were many people who were affected, um, young people and families affected by racism and um, inequities in the school system. And so um, to follow Irv's lead on um, eligibility, I'm sure there are families and folks and students and people who were affected in certain ways that lived in Amherst within those years that may have found it so difficult that they relocated, like they're gone now. And so I don't know if that's going to be something that we address in the eligibility requirements. Um, you know, like, is, is it that, you know, oh, uh, families need to have gotten through the school system or they need to uh, uh, apply or, um, you know, like uh, come back to share their experiences. I, I don't know what it is. I'm just saying that I feel like those numbers that Irv is talking about might be larger because there's probably some folks who have said, oh, well, you know, I just can't take this and they move away. You know, um, I don't know if that's um, some of you who have kind of looked at what the framework is for reparations in other communities, if that's actually something that is addressed. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what I can do is get together the um, eligibility process that Evanston went through to prepare that for you all and um, share that with you because it's really helpful to see what another community did. And you're absolutely right, Yvonne. Um, there are there are certainly people that have been harmed um, that are no longer in our community and um, when we're thinking about individual reparations versus the collective reparations that we, um, you know, that that's something we really need to think about is how are we going to reach folks that no longer live here because because of the harm, even, you know, and I think that's um, I, I, I certainly am holding that in the top of my mind. Um, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, so I, I know of three ideas out there. There is the Evanston approach, which was linked to a very specific uh, mode of redress having to do with housing coming out of an impact study that zeroed in on redlining and the negative effects that that had on black home ownership in Evanston. Um, and so an eligibility criteria was identified for those who could uh, submit and uh, uh, an attempt to receive funding uh, through that through that housing uh, black home ownership uh, program. There is also the work of uh, Darity and Mullen in From Here to Equality, not relative to a local program, but relative to an idea about national uh, level reparations having to do with from the time that a reparations program begins is is extended, that uh, you would have been have be able to prove that you identified as of African heritage of African descent, African black or African American, um, in various ways, you would have to prove within the last 12 years you've been living as a uh, uh, as a black black person, um, and that you trace actual um, genealogically you are traced to families that um, to ancestors that actually lived in um, in the uh, in the United States and um, were enslaved. Uh, and then thirdly, there is the approach that, the, uh, that BAM has taken that uh, looks at people of African heritage, regardless of birth, regardless of nativity, regardless of uh, being born in Amherst or not, or having ancestors born in Amherst, but of African heritage, living as Africans, as, as an African person, 
in the United States, in Amherst, resident of Amherst, and that you are therefore um, uh, eligible to be part of this stakeholder group or of this uh, Black Assembly uh, of Amherst, Massachusetts. Um, there could be other proposals, other ideas about eligibility um, out there, but we do have those three sort of before us. And I think that um, the, I, I, I think we can pose ourselves this question for a January meeting, a February meeting. I, I, don't, I don't see any reason to necessarily delay uh, it to a phase two between July and September of 2022. I'm open to, to moving on, uh, 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 launching a discussion on that issue before uh, the period of July to September. So I would say yes, I, I, what I'm hearing is we're certainly willing to vote for the time to empower our chair to uh, initiate a process of extending the life of this group, of this, of this public body, uh, but that details or specifics of this strategic plan, we may or may not choose to vote on tonight that there are, as, as has already been raised, certain questions that may not exactly fall uh, in, in the phases or, 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 or even things not on here that, that might should be on here. So if we could just take this right now as a working document for uh, the chair's use in approaching the uh, town government about extending our charge, I think uh, I'm in agreement with that, but that, but that clearly there is a rationale um, both within these bullet points and, and, uh, and, and as we have been talking, there's a reason to extend beyond June of 2022. And that being the case, I'm prepared to move that we direct the chair to request that the town council extend the charge of the African Heritage Reparations Assembly uh, uh, beyond June of 2022, and in fact, to extend it to June of 2023. I wanna say Lord second, but I see Jennifer's head going like this. Wait a minute, just, I can't, I, Dr. Shabazz, that was fantastic. I just, could you repeat that for me? Because see, I, I couldn't quite catch all of that. And well, so, I'm, I'm going to use what's on the screen. I move okay. that our assembly direct the chair to request that the town council extend the charge of the African Heritage Reparations Assembly beyond June of 2022 to June of 2023. Lord, second. Got it. All right, uh, so we had a second. Um, any discussion, any further discussion before I do a roll call vote? I have a question. Yeah. Is the... Uh, motion um is there a reason why the motion is being pulled out uh from the entire document that is this uh basically strategic plan proposal are we voting on the plan proposal separately from the idea that the charge of the committee will be extended that's a good yeah. question, Yvonne. Um, and I think, you know, I, I liked the language that Dr. Shabazz used in terms of using the strategic plan as a working document. And somewhere in there, I say that the phases are flexible. We could certainly take the dates out. And it's sort of like a, a, a flow chart for us to work with, but I, I imagine it will evolve. And um, so if we want to, I think first, we want to go ahead and make this motion to direct me to um, ask for that extension. And then I would suggest we talk about the strategic plan briefly again to, to, to come up with some language that allows us maybe to 
to vote on that or adopting that tonight um, in some form or fashion. Well, the reason why I brought it up is because I think it gives a lot of credence to extending the committee charge mm. because now we have a document, we've got like steps in order for us to fulfill those steps, we need to extend the charge of the committee so that we can fulfill the steps. You know what I mean? So I, I mean, I, I think it's fine to vote on them separately, but I would say that they go together mm. uh, very well. And that certainly let's vote on this motion and then continue so that by the end of this meeting, we can have this some, you know, somewhat strategic plan in place so that that, I mean, when you, when you go to ask or try to do whatever the protocols is to extend the committee charge, the strategic plan is a part of the reason why we're extending the committee charge, you know, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that what somebody said earlier um, about creating, a, what I would do is I would create a little narrative that would go with the strategic plan. And that's what I would um, <clears throat> submit. Now, something that's on my mind is the last meeting of this council is on Monday. So I could potentially call Lynn tomorrow and ask her if she would be willing to take something, you know, the, the something that the chair didn't anticipate within 48 hours um, and add this to the agenda. Otherwise, we're going to be wait. My fear is what's going to happen is we're going to be waiting into January to get that approval because the first couple meetings of the new council are really going to be foundational and just sort of getting grounded in the new council. So if you all don't care, if, if you give me the sort of direction to let me go ahead and try to get it on that agenda for Monday's meeting, <laughs> if everyone's okay with that, I will certainly um, call in first thing tomorrow morning and see if that's even a possibility. All right. All right. <laughs> so basically, um, Dr. Shabazz, I think your hand is, is your hand raised? I can address something. Sure. I think if we change the note at the bottom to say items from uh, phases one, two, and three can happen at different times. I know that that sort of uh, subverts the idea of phases in some respect. But if we could, but since it says their phase two and three can happen simultaneously, um, if we could also identify that uh, items um, could be addressed in an earlier um, phase. I, I gather the, the idea is there's a, a data collection that we would embark on from, from this point uh, through, through June, um, tapping uh, expert knowledge, tapping the community knowledge, um, and uh, going on from there to um, revisiting and, and developing a harm report. And, and um, but if you're developing the harm report, then why couldn't criteria uh, or eligibility be part of the harm report that you're developing in phase one. I agree with um, members who have expressed tonight, you know, the need to engage that question earlier in a way you are addressing it earlier because as you develop, um, whether a narrow, narrowly tailored harm report or not, as you develop a sense of the harms, you're, you can also begin to develop the question of how would a how would redress um, best work given these harms? How would how would? Uh, but the other thing is that I think we have to keep because you know I've ducked this eligibility question from the beginning because I don't think it's very important. Um, to me, the in the sense of 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 trying to say it's one group and one group only for all time. The eligibility criterion developed in Evanston is around a specific harm report, a specific issue being addressed in a specific way. 
it's not to say that down the line, other proposals, other ideas can't be addressed that might involve people who did not have ancestors, who did not have people who lived in Evanston uh, in the 1960s or before the 1960s or whatever it was. These, there might be a different criteria. There might be a different um, um, idea based upon a different harm that people are attempting to address. So I don't think we ought to really be concerned about locking in into a single definition for all time that will govern the, the rep, reparative justice work in Amherst, okay? If you have a specific harm and you wanna prioritize a specific harm and a specific impact on a specific population of African heritage people in Amherst and say, hey, this is what we wanna to prioritize to address first, and uh, then that's fine. And that's the eligibility that you're addressing in that specific redress. But other items may come up to be to be addressed uh, that you'll want to redress that have that that may require a different sense of eligibility. So that's that's my own thinking about it. If there is simply a way to pull that out of phase two, and to say in phase one we will begin to consider, you know, questions of of eligibility for reparative justice efforts. Uh, along with the harm report, then I don't think we've, I, I don't know that there's any other problem with using this as a working document. Again, not as a blow by blow blueprint, blueprint of, of all we're gonna do uh, over this time period, nothing else will be discussed, nothing else, you know, but as a working document, then I'd say, yes, after the vote that's on the floor, we could also vote in some way to say this amended, strategic report, uh, strategic plan is to be used as a working document in uh, understanding why we would would want to extend our time. But but for now, uh, I think the vote is just on the the um, the extension of time. And so that's how I I would uh, address the, the question, uh, the very good question that Yvonne raises. Ms. Mendez raises. Great, thank you. And I just made two changes here. You can see here under building the foundation, I've added eligibility with the harm report here. So that sort of covers what Dr. Shabazz is referring to. And then I also changed here that time frames are flexible. So we're not locked into anything. Um, and that sort of can help us, you know, make this a more of, a, of an, evo um, an evolving process. And Irv, did you have your hand up? I did, but um, everything that I was going to talk about, Dr. Shabazz addressed. And uh, as long as we have that in the forefront and in our thought process, that uh, whatever happens in the harm, whether in terms of going forward with the impacts and harm, that we're dealing with a population of African Americans uh, who were or are in Amherst and those numbers need to be considered in terms of how we go about developing the criteria. Excellent, yes, Jennifer. So very similar to Dr. Rhodes and Dr. Shabazz, I just wanted to say that, you know, it, it is very hard because the harm or the damage that is done can change at any time. There could be some type of, of event that occurs. Um, even five years from now. And so then would we exclude? And then the other piece is this is about equity. So you kind of have to look at it through the lens of, in, in that way too, of what is equitable for all, right? Not just for you get equity because you were born here, but all that live here. Dr. Shabazz? You're muted. Yeah, it's just a point of order, our process question. Would we want to entertain a friendly amendment to this motion in light of the modifications to the strategic plan, or do we want to just finish this vote first and then come back around and take up the, uh, voting the strategic plan? 
I believe procedurally, either we go for amendment or we call the question. And 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 I would like to call the question and then vote and vote on this and then move on. Okay. So I'll do a roll call vote. Um, Yvonne, how do you vote? I vote yes, yay. Okay, Irv, how do you vote? Yes. Hala, how do you vote? Lord, I. Dr. Shabazz, how do you vote? Shabazz, yes. And Miller, yes. Okay, so that was unanimous. And um, are we saying that we want to now create a new motion that essentially adopts the strategic plan to be used as a working document. Um, and I see Dr. Shabazz that your hand is raised. So please go ahead. So if you wanna start another little box to get the language of this motion. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> On the fly here, let's see if I can do this. I think I can, I gotta move some stuff around. Okay, new slide, all right. When you're not already talking, it's easier for me to catch what you're saying. But when I'm finishing the last sentence, you know. Yeah. Are you good? Are you? <laughs> I'm OK. You can okay. Go. All right. So does somebody want Dr. Shabazz, would you propose some language for this motion? I move. I move. One second. That we adopt. The AHRA, the African Heritage Reparation Assembly Strategic Plan pr Proposal, as a working document. Thank you. Sorry. For purposes of our work going forward. And to inform the Council. regarding our sunset date. And do we have, oops, do we have a second? Second. Great. Any discussion, any further discussion on this? One, one point of discussion that I would raise that, and I don't say it to say we should go back into the document, but when I was saying something's not in the document, for example, um, it proposes that we at some point develops this draft plan, but it doesn't actually indicate that the draft plan will be submitted to the council. The council will address the, rep, the, the draft plan in some form or fashion, adopting it, accepting it, um, uh, asking for rewrites, asking for uh, modification, what have you. And then at some point then we are empowered to move in that third phase of, um, you know, of, of, of beginning to make allocations of identifying funding sources and, and uh, recommending allocation, if, if that's a part of it. But um, there's no, there's no uh, indication of that. And I just would say that I am interested, uh, Madam Chair, that we get a sense of um, if, if, if indeed the, there are some targets. So for example, uh, we've previously made some recommendations and I don't know when we're going to be asked when we might be invited to discuss with them or what have you about some of the recommendations we've made, particularly concerning cannabis revenue, concerning um, the ARPA funds. Uh, we've made some bold recommendations, but I'm not, I don't have any sense. And I know you'll be, you'll be sworn in soon. And so you'll be, uh, you know, privy to the, the movements of the council on these matters. And that's a good thing, but I am uh, concerned that, you know, at some point we have some understanding of when our work 
is being considered and hopefully adopted, and then we move on to the to to, to whatever comes next. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the um, pieces that I plan to talk about that's on the agenda tonight is a funding update. And um, I had a chance to review the draft budget guidelines that were submitted by the Finance Committee. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what my um, observations are based on that document. Um, so yes, absolutely. Uh, would you like me, Dr. Shabazz, to add something to this right now about uh, reporting back, or you just were sort of making that that comment? Good. Not necessarily. It's it, it's just noting that there's a development of a plan um, in under phase two, but there's nothing that indicates between phase two and phase three that there's ever a hearing, there's ever a, an interaction with the council about that, that plan. So in some ways, phase three is kind of contingent on, on something happening. But I just think we can leave that as an, as an observation at this point and, uh, and, and understand that this is, and, and I'm, I'm prepared to vote on this as a working document as is. Okay, great. Does anyone else have any other discussion on this before we um, take a vote? Okay, I don't see any hands. Um, so I'm gonna come back to the motion here and I am gonna start with Hala, how do you vote? Oh, I think we just lost Hala. Um, <laughs> Oh, there, there we go. Hala, how do you vote? Sorry, I had some technical issues, Lord. <laughs> I. Okay. Yvonne, how do you vote? I vote yes. Okay. Irv, how do you vote? I vote yes, and I'm leaving the meeting. Okay. 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 <laughs> We have a couple other motions and I, I know that they were important matters to you, but I can follow up with you tomorrow. Right, I know you have you. to go. Okay. Um, Dr. Shabazz, how do you vote? Shabazz, yes. Okay, and Miller, yes. So that passes unanimously and great. Thank you, everybody. Um, so is it the consensus of the group that will now that we've sort of voted to ask for that extension, we voted to use this as a working document, we're gonna let that sit for, and let's go through that process of getting the extension. And so that would mean we can move on to another agenda item unless there is any other discussion on this matter. Okay, great. Okay, so, um, Let's go to the funding update. And um, I'd like to provide some information that I have. Um, I had a chance to speak with a representative from um, the CPA committee there, the, the CPAC group. And that person informed me that $550,000 has been left in reserves um, and that money is eligible to be applied for. And so I wanted to bring that to this body to see if you would like to move forward with some project um, potentially that we could apply for. Um, under the guidelines of CPA. Um, and I know we've talked a little bit about this, not extensively, but um, there is $550,000 that's available. And I think we would want to move on that. Um, one suggestion from the representative on the CPA was um, land reparations for farming. Um, is a potential use 
under the CPA. There's also other uses like the cemetery, the historic, um, the West Cemetery, and um, for example, marker programs. There's all sorts of ways. And so what I'd like to do is get the discussion going to see if we want to move forward with applying for some project and how is this body going to decide uh, what that project is. It, would this be us, or maybe that project would be collecting data? Is that what we're talking about? Like uh, polling or creating opportunities for general community to weigh in on what we're doing and make suggestions. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little, I'm just trying to get a sense of like what kinds of things we would begin with. So the CPA is very, res not restricted, but they have very specific guidelines for what you can use the money for. Um, and let's see if I can, Jennifer, you don't happen to have them readily available anywhere, do you? No, okay, hang on. Um, so it's basically historical, open space. Um, I have it. You do, could you read it, Dr. Shabazz? Thank yes. you. It says that um, the, uh, the CPA uh, makes recommendations to the town council for the acquisition, creation, and preservation of open space, for the acquisition and preservation of historic resources, for the acquisition, creation, and preservation of land for recreational use, for the creation, preservation, and support of community housing, and for rehabilitation or restoration of such open space, historic resources, land for recreational use, and community housing that is acquired or created as provided in the Community Preservation Act. So it's very specific to that, not surveys, not studies, not um, uh, uh, unless it's specifically related to uh, uh, acquisition, creation, preservation, of land, of historic resources, or um, uh, 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 rehabbing things for uh, recreational use. And so one of the big proposals that is pending, I don't know if that's against this 550 or, um, uh, uh, or it's already been applied for in some other funds, perhaps Jennifer may, may know and can enlighten us, but I think there is a question about the recreational uh, space uh, for um, particularly with with the African heritage community in mind, has been has been brought up under under CPA. But but to to the specifics though, um, I hope to have uh, something to to share with you, Madam Chair, and from there to share with the assembly um, in the next. Uh, I, I will share it with you, and perhaps by our next meeting, you'll you'll wish to share it with the uh, assembly for consideration. I think. A, an affirmative uh, nod or an affirmative vote of the assembly uh, would give it an extra set of backing to then go forward to the, to the CPA and, um, and from there forward to the town council. So, uh, so yes, I would, uh, uh, I, I look to, to share something with you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes, that would be great. Um, and there isn't a, a hard deadline. It's really just about um, demonstrating that there's an urgency. Um, and so that sounds like a great plan. If, if that works for everybody, that, that works for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do we know anything about this discussion of um, recreational? Um, I, I mean, particularly I'm hearing the high schools, um, badly in need uh, recreational facilities, the fields or whatever has been raised as uh, a prime candidate for CPA fundings. Is that against this pool or has that already gone in against another pool? Do we know? Jennifer, I'll let you speak to that, but I think it's separate. I think it's separate because the, the original plan or renovation of the fields is, uh, 
exceeds this Five amount. Yeah, that's by a lot. That's what and I thought. So too. I think it it just wouldn't be enough, and so whatever time frame that the money has to be used by wouldn't meet that that that's time why, frame. That's what I wanted to ask because I'm like, this 550 is already gone. If it's <laughs> if yeah. that other no. if those other needs are are, are claim, making a claim against it. But I think that with the things that are that fall under CPA, that there's you know like we can't solve the housing crisis, but there's a lot that can be done with five hundred and fifty thousand dollars towards housing, um, and or finding additional grants to work with that five hundred and fifty thousand that can be beneficial or basically to all of it, right? Um, and I know that Irv had earlier wanted a certain amount of, well, they did vote to allocate a certain amount of money back to recreation though, correct? From free cash. Yeah. Uh, no. Was it not from free cash? Uh, so uh, from free cash, you mean into the reparations fund or a, as a separate for recreation? I feel like that separate was- Separate from reparations, but towards recreation. recreation. I think it was ARPA is my it's ARPA funds okay yeah, that's my recollection okay um and another idea is so now we're getting into sort of um in this particular case deciding something right for the sort of on behalf of the community where ideally what we will be doing is going out engaging the community asking folks and that's how this body will then determine what to prioritize as you said Dr. Shabazz so you know I think for this given the timing you know your connections within the community and talking to folks and then bringing back a proposal is enough but there's also um, you know the opportunity for us to invite specific public feedback um, in relation to this, if we wanted to go that route. I would just recommend that you speak with Anna, um, Councilor elect um, because I think she has a wealth of information about this and she has a really good sense of what might be eligible and not and, and things like that. Um, there's also Sarah Marshall, I think is the chair of that body and would be a great person to speak with, I think about this as well. So. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable waiting for you to bring something back and and, and us to go from there. Um, Sarah Marshall's also on the Amherst Recreation Committee, so that might be useful, but I would actually think about maybe checking in with the Amherst Family Center mm -hmm. or, um, so there's Amherst Family Center and then there's, uh, that's through the schools and then there's another one. I. I tend to intertwine them because their names are so similar. The Family Center, no. Family Outreach of Amherst? Family Outreach of Amherst, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I would I would try and look at even the ASC for those purposes as well, but. Let me tap one other thing while I have such uh, great minds and, and people with fonts of wisdom here, uh, especially Holla Lord in the dark where she is. Um, but uh, the, 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 what was formerly known as the Hitchcock Center, I understand that's town of Amherst property. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty interesting location there by the common school and uh, I think not far from a bus stop. Um, that, I hear it's in need of rehab, it's in need of, of work, but um, it strikes me as a, a, potential, uh, a potential location that could be a a a, uh, a nice space for um, for projects, uh, community-based projects that that you know we'd want to have a space where folks could come, could um, you know uh, develop develop the work, and then from there fan out in the community, working on the Black Census, working on 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 talking to people about needs. It seems. It could be a an interesting space, and then, and I know it's not the only town-owned space, but any know anyone know anything about that particular building? It, is it still? I thought they moved to Hampshire College. Yeah, no, they're no longer operating the program in that space. That right, moved, but they, that but moved. that town, but the town still owns that space. Is your that's split. what I'm asking? Okay, but I thought the common school went there. I mean, when you drive by it, instead of it saying the Hitchcock Center, it says the common school. So my thought per thought process, I could check in easily, but I thought that that's where the common school was. 
I'm checking address is now. I think they're both there actually. And it's, I think my understanding is that the town may own that. And you could call Paul and just, or Jennifer is your best, Jennifer can ask Paul too. Well, David Zomack is, that's, his, you know, he's the, that I would bring that to that, have that conversation with the David Zomack. Sure. And just keeping in mind that with the CPA, it's it has to be very tailored to their criteria. And so um, if we can um, really hone in on something that would sort of be a lock and key for them, so to speak, you know, I think it would um, it would help us to get the most amount of that five hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. So how about I do this, Dr. Shabazz? I will add it uh, as an agenda item for next next meeting, and, sure. and and that way you'll have you know I'm I'm assuming that we will not be meeting until after the new year at this point, <laughs> um, but we can talk about that certainly. But does that work for you? Yep. Okay. Great. Are we calling that agenda item Hitchcock Center update? I. Um, what do you want to? CPA. 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 Yeah. And so in terms of the, are there any other questions about the CPA before I move on? Okay. So with respect to the budget, the draft budget guidelines, um, and I apologize, they, they are not in the packet um, for your review this week, but I will, will, will go ahead and add them. But I, you can just do a, a Google search and find them as well. I can send them by email. Um, the draft budget guideline is a document that the finance committee creates um, at this time of year. Um, and it's meant to inform town manager Bachelman about sort of the priorities and, and in, in, with respect to the budget. Um, and when you read it, you'll see that there is um, some narrative about the community safety working groups recommendations and CRESS, but there's very little really narrative about overall racial justice, um, you know, and so I think what that told me or tells me is that we this process that we'll go through over the next several months is a real opportunity for us to further engage um, and educate counselors and committee members and the community at large. Um, and so that when that draft comes out next time, um, it includes something much more um, significant in relation to reparations. Um, that's not to say that we don't move forward with the requests that we made, but um, I think that doing this upfront work, especially what we have outlined in phase one, is going to help, um, help us with respect to making that case for a larger commitment. And uh, you know, what we learned, what Dr. Shabazz and I, and I learned in Evanston is <clears throat> different communities have approached this in different ways, um, but several communities, including Evanston and Asheville, they asked for X amount of money. So they said, we want we, we want a commitment of $2 million, or in Evanston's case, $10 million. Um and there are different ways to do that. You know, we have asked for the cannabis funds, but there are also ways to say, to ask, for example, that the reparation fund be increased incrementally each year. And we don't care where it comes from, for example. You know what I mean? Like take it from wherever and just increase it by X amount each year. And so we wanna kind of be thinking about that, those different possibilities. Um, and so 
I don't have much more to add in terms of a funding update other than to recommend and encourage you to read the budget guidelines and see how we may want to have that narrative look a little different next time they're written <laughs> um, and do the work that we need to do between now and then to make that happen um, and really make our case um, for, a, for a substantial commitment, which is what we really need. Um, so if there are any other questions on that, though, on anything related to funding, um, this is a this is the time to ask. Nothing. All right, great. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Jennifer. Sorry about that. It's my famous line. Just, um, you know, my thoughts when it comes to budgets in the town is that this is a business. So you have to think about it in a business and maybe be less specific about where and let them figure that out and get them to just agree to the amount of money. Dr. Shabazz? So I thought one of our specific, uh, you know, requests could be interpreted as simply to have an earmark discussion. Um, so the guideline is one thing, but are you hearing anything about, or is there anything that contradicts that possibility from happening in the, in the budget guideline? That, in other words, that when the new um, council is seated in January, I can gather just because we gave them this, these recommendations in November that, they wouldn't instantly, you know, and I've been hearing all the discussion about, you know, this, this lame duck council not, you know, making some mad dash to, to do all these rash things. But, um, and I get, so that's, that's fine. But it, it would be helpful to know that if, when the new council is seated, that there is perhaps a plan, there is perhaps an idea out there that, um, relative to the recommendation of the AHRA, we will have a earmark discussion about the cannabis revenue in date certain. Is there anything in the guidelines you're seeing that would, would speak against that for the coming revenue stream or the revenue stream uh, coming forward in, um, in terms of the cannabis revenue, or is it already kind of identified that it's it's supporting the budget for for um, the the next fiscal year budget. It's already supporting it in some other ways. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, do you want to speak to that? That money is not. In, they don't include that in the budget in the same manner to go you know, to be supportive of the overall town budget. But what I will say is that I don't. I I don't know where we are with the uh, revenues from marijuana because I, you know, Rise stopped selling recreational and then we had another one pop up. And whenever I drive by there, I don't even know if they're open because I don't ever see a car in the parking lot. So, I, I mean, the problem with it now is that they're popping up everywhere. So there's so many options, um, so. Yeah, it's a really good point. And I think, you know, we don't know, it's very unpredictable what's going to happen with the, ca the cannabis in, in the recreational in particular, which is the only place that we can, you know, we're not, we can't, the, the cannabis revenue um, for medical does not apply to us. So um, I do think they used the cannabis revenue last year in the operating budget. Um, but to specifically answer your question, Dr. Shabazz, the new council has the opportunity to review these draft budget guidelines and ask for changes to them. So it's, you know, over the next several months, and I suspect they, they likely will, um, you know, as part of the process of the budget cycle. So um, I think there will be an opportunity to come back to this. Absolutely. Um, but more and more, I, I'm, 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 I'm less inclined to, um, to only go after that because, and, and more to say, let's ask for X amount and let's ask for increases yearly because, um, because we just don't know it's not a dependable source of income necessarily or source of revenue. Do you feel that's something we're waiting 
down the line to 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 discuss as an assembly uh making those recommendations about in terms of like you know a specific goal of x amount and you know add to it incrementally and let's have a plan to build toward it or or is it something we ought to move to to discuss sooner in our agenda next year Personally, I think that until we do this work of really going out, engaging the community, educating the community, and sort of um, really capturing the hearts and minds, as we talked about, um, I, I think we will be more successful once we've done all of that work in really asking for a significant commitment from the town. Um, I don't know what that point, where that point's going to be in our work, but I think we'll know. I think we'll know once that groundswell starts rising up and we start educating and um, we start talking to all sorts of um, stakeholders and counselors and everybody else, um, we'll, we'll know when it's time to ask for that commitment. Um, I trust that. And so... I wouldn't force it because I, I don't think that we're actually, I don't think, I think though we've done a lot of work, we're not that, we're just not there yet. That's my sense. Okay, all right. Any other questions on the funding before we move on? And so we're going to move on to the black census and we do have a motion in here actually I am proposing a motion I should say. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and ask. Did folks have a chance to review the Donahue Institute proposal that Irv worked on um, with respect to the black census. And I'm going to come to it right here. Okay. So Irv uh, worked with the Donahue Institute um, to produce a proposal and a scope of services um, for the town manager um, that is $3,500. Um, and it looks like a very good time frame. Um, and so I'm going to leave this up for a minute and I'm gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, and then I have a motion that essentially, um, let's see here. Uh, so the motion is, I'm just sort of previewing the motion, is to request that the town manager allocate $3,500 from the 2021 reparation set aside toward the Dunahue Institute proposal in the 1216 meeting packet. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that up here and for you all to take a look at and I'll be right back. Jennifer, you're not able to scroll it up, are you? Okay, it's on her computer. It's on her com. Oh, and I, I can't stop her share. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Did you did you get a copy in the email? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I oh. had something else open in the email, but um, sure. My question, the proposal is about approving approving this proposal. It's like $3,500 to help to gather data on popula population data. 
I mean, that's kind of a no brainer. Okay. <laughs> the, the granularity to me is really the question. I, it, I, it sounds like it's going to be able to map out specific streets where um, people who answered the census as identifying as African American. And so we can perhaps see certain clusters. Okay. Um, we're Great. not going to we're not going to get name and door addresses or you know or apartment addresses. Um, we'll just see certain streets. We'll see certain uh, yeah. tracks, neighborhood tracks, or whatever that mm -hmm. you know dots will show up saying that there were people that identified themselves as of uh, black or African American on the for the census, um, and. And, you know, maybe that's helpful. I don't know. Um, but uh, they're going to, you know, it'll be some pretty pictures, I suppose, to see where Black people live. Yeah, that's where they get it from. It's at the census tract level. Michelle, I was just asking, yeah. I looked at, I looked through the proposal and I was like, I don't know what the committee's voting on. Is it just to approve the proposal to get this data? Um, so the this would be to um, ask the town manager to actually move forward with this proposal and allocate. So um, Paul set aside, um, I think it was about $6,000 last year for our group. Um, so it it's still, he, he told me, he, he said that it's still set aside for us. Um, and so what we're doing is asking him to use 3,500 of that money um, toward this proposal. And um, so I'll go ahead and read the motion and, and then we can have a discussion within that if that works. Um, so the motion is to request that the town manager allocate $3,500 from the 2021 reparation set aside toward the Donahue Institute proposal in the 1216 meeting packet. And is there a second? This motion doesn't say what the $3,500 does or why we're doing it. Allocate $3,500 from from the 2021 reparations set aside. Um, so that's the money that he has set aside for us from last year. And to go toward the proposal. So basically to pay, <laughs> we can be more direct maybe. Yes, um, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it's going towards, yeah. Yeah, so I guess how would how might we language this a little bit better? Um, Are we paying the Donahue Institute for the work they've done already towards this? Or is this like, oh, this is the $3,500 we're gonna pay them to help us glean this information? Exactly. Okay, yeah, I think it should be more clear. The motion needs to be clear that we're paying for the Donahue Institute. We're paying the Donahue Institute. Okay. To, so assist, to assist us with, with getting at this data, right? Yes. Um, so how, because we, it's the town manager's decision whether he wants to accept the proposal. So we don't have the authority to accept it. Um, so we have to request that the town manager, basically we would come, if we, if we approve this, then, then I would go to town manager Buckelman and say, a HRA voted to, to request that you move forward with this proposal in this scope of work with the Donahue Institute. Yes, Jennifer, please help. I, well, I was just think. I'm sorry, I was like choking on the chip. Toward the Donahue Institutional Proposal that will help gather information towards the Black Census. I mean, like, I think that's, she's just looking for a little bit of fluff in there. Right. That might not be the right wording, but I would put, I would include Black Census in there because okay. that's what it's for. So for a Black Census. To help collect data for the Black Census, because they're not going to be our only data set source, but they are a and, data source. And it's, and it's from, because they've already gotten the data. Right? Yeah. We're not doing new data. 
I don't think they've collected it in the manner that we need it. Oh, right? okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This is going to be new work. Yeah. So, Al, okay. Motion to request that the town manager allocate $3,500 from the 2021 side toward the Dunahue Institute proposal to help or to, to help. To help collect data. Collect, yeah. To collect data for a black census of Amherst. I right would, in, I would put like somehow that it's contributing to the black census, right? So that it doesn't appear to be the only source of the black census. Yes. Okay. Then here's oh well, I'll collect data used to create support. Yeah, or to support information of the black census of Amherst. I don't know support the development yes of a black census okay black census of amherst and do we i don't think we need to put this extra stuff down here yes that I mean, makes sense now do we need to reference like will it, it is it clear jennifer that it's that that because when if the Donahue Institute puts another proposal forward, it should I is there a date on it? Maybe I should put the you could still include that 1216 date if you think it's um you know like a detail uh necessary. You know, I'll say the know. I'll say November the November 23rd. Yeah, exactly. Nah, okay, okay better different date. Motion to request that the time I such a remember dated. Two thousand twenty one to collect data used to support the development of a black census of Amherst. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Why well, so can I to read the motion then? Please. Right? Yes. All right. So <laughs> here's the motion. I put in the motion to request that the town manager allocate thirty five hundred dollars from the twenty twenty one reparations set aside towards a Donahue Institute proposal dated November 23rd, 2021, to collect data used to support the development of a Black census of Amherst. Second. Great. Okay, any discussion? Hala or Dr. Shabazz, just checking in with you for discussion. Can call the question. Nothing. Okay, great. Um, so I'll go ahead and call the vote. And starting with you, Dr. Shabazz, how do you vote? Um, I'll say uh, I, I'm going to abstain. I'll abstain for now. Okay. Hala? Lord, I. Okay. Um, Miller, I. Yvonne? Is that okay? Okay. Um, Miller. Yvonne, yes. Okay, so that's three yes and one abstain. Does that does that work, Jennifer? Does that pass or does that? I think it should. We're a sick. I mean, body. you are. It always. I mean, I could just look at it as the majority went um the majority vote okay i okay. would just include that you just i mean like in my minutes i will include that two were absent okay perfect okay do and i i just have sort of a silly question and i could ask this off the record but does anyone ever at like I'm so curious. I guess I'll call you tomorrow, Dr. Shabazz. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always curious, you know, about these things, like if there was more to add or any information, but um, yeah. Okay. So that passes. Um, and Dr. Shabazz or Hala, was there any additional information through BAM with respect to the Black Census that we should report on? Only to say, I think now that all the election stuff is over, we hope to uh, 
go and have a sit down with the election department about what uh, ideas, what uh, strategy, what information they may have on, um, uh, you know, actual where folks are and how we might look at, um, you know, access data to help further our goal of identifying actual actual locations of people to uh, uh, to to inform about this work. Yeah, that's excellent. That's great. Yeah, and and good timing. Um, okay, so let me just. Of course, of course, the people we'll have doing it won't be getting paid like the Donahue Institute. They'll have to do it on their own time and on their own dime, uh, along with the, the folks at the clerk's the clerk's office. They'll be answering a public request, you know, mm -hmm. I guess at their own speed and in their own time based on it. Yeah. Mm. Jennifer? I just have a question of, of clarification, though. How would the information that the clerk would have be different from the census information that the Donahue Center has? Census information won't give you any location of where anybody oh, lives. I see what you're it's saying. It's going to give you plots. It's going to be visualization yeah. of plots of where people who answered the census takers information, where they are. Uh, there is at a level of granularity, um, and I may be uh, wrong on, I, 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 someone may inform me where the census taker who goes through um, which was during a very extraordinary time that these takers would do it. So I don't know, but I've seen older um, uh, census returns. And, um, uh, you know, and so they do log the address. They do log all the people. They do log how each person is identified um, uh, racially and, and, and in other categories, other and otherwise. And they... Um, have this house by house, block by block. But whether you would actually uh, have that available to you now in 2020 and can give us those names and addresses, I don't think that's what you're going to get in two to three weeks from the Donahue Institute. You're going to get um, visualizations, a lot of maps and stuff of streets, locations showing you different little dots and different little uh, uh, scatter sh scatter shot of where blacks are predominant, where you could thereby go and maybe with the census, with the clerk's office information, which is by actual address, you could go to those addresses and kind of you know figure out who might be in on those streets, on those blocks. But I don't think from the census you're going to get names and addresses um, at this at this stage. But can the, the clerk share the personal information from the census? So I think there is a voting, a voter roll that is a public document that says, here are all the voters of Amherst and here is where they okay, live. So you're, if okay. I'm, if I'm wrong right. and that's not a public document, I guess that's what the clerk is going to tell me. But, um, if, uh, uh, but if it is a public document, then yes, we will have every address, every name. But it's only those who vote. So it's not a I feel like, a, yeah, it's not everything. It's just those of voting age who are registered. So that there's a difference. There's a difference. Yeah. No, and I'm glad that you said that because, you know, as much as I'm opposed to it, I have <clears throat> someone over 18 in my household and he won't vote like he's just anti government voting the whole nine. So but he doesn't vote but he's still a person of color, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's lots of um, individuals out there. That's really interesting, yeah. Okay, um, so Jennifer, will you, did you attend the reckoning? Did anyone? <laughs> Okay, well, I think that Alexis may have, and um, so we'll wait and we'll, we'll push that debrief off until our next meeting. Um, and I actually would suggest, and, and Dr. Shabazz, let me know what you think about this, but 
I would love to put the video um, of the town hall meeting that was put out um, from Evanston. Yeah, I'd love to put that in our packet for our next meeting. If you want to take some time right now to debrief this, um, we could do that, or we could put that in there for the next time. And when there, when we have more folks here to to share with, we could talk about it next time. Any? I think we could talk about it, but um, any of the links coming out of that meeting, I would recommend we add to our to our website. And if I need to make a motion, if we've got enough people to do that, yes, Jennifer. You're still muted. You're, yeah. <laughs> I've literally had multiple conversations on mute today. This is just bad. Um, so I, I guess I'm kind of going under other topics not discussed because you give me a list of links and Amherst Media has changed their websites and none of those links work anymore. Or I don't know what happened with Amherst Media. I, it looks like they changed their website from the last I looked. But And if you guys, I can show you on our page that I have added the resources that were given but the ones that you had don't, aren't working. The, the Amherst media links aren't working. Well, Alexis did share with me that they were revamping their website and it was gonna be set to go live. So I bet you some, there's some glitch or something there. Um, maybe I can call Alexis tomorrow and see what's happening with that. Jennifer, so. is that the case for all our archived AHRA meetings as well? Those links are inoperable? No, so our AHRA meetings are on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. that Amherst Media picks up. I would maybe it might be a little different for the council because they, you know, they live stream that, but our meetings are on the YouTube channel. So it's a link to the so YouTube I'll, channel. So I'll double check, try to revise those and get you a revised list. And, and then uh, Michelle and I can just work on any links relative to the National Town Hall that uh, that we can also share uh, via our website. It was a great, incredible fountain of, of inf information and inspiration to um, see uh, folks from across the country, from the West Coast, um, San Francisco, Sacramento, uh, <coughs> LA, all the way to the East Coast, to our, our friends in Boston, uh, to down south, uh, Atlanta, um, New Orleans, um, uh, 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 you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, to the Midwest, to Chicago and Evanston, where we were, you know, all reporting on their, the activities in their area, um, what some of the questions that are coming up are. Um, and um, yeah. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, it speaks to the, uh, the growth of a, uh, of, of a real momentum uh, in support of both nationally, a, a national reparations program, but also in the spirit of, of, of repair, in the spirit of reparative justice actions on the ground in, in local areas to, uh, to begin to, to address uh, historic harms and inequities. And um, I'll say that um, when we were leaving, Dr. Shabazz and I had to leave just a little bit early to get to the airport. And one of the commissioners of NARC um, basically said, as I was saying goodbye to him, um, that he'll see he'll see me in Amherst. And so uh, that's for future discussion. But I do believe that um, being there. Um, was uh, everything that Dr. Shabazz said. And also, you know, we, we're, we're really, um, as a community, really far along in this, in this journey, um, or, or at the cutting edge of this journey of local reparations. And so um, just was very grateful for that for that opportunity and uh, look forward to sharing the town hall. And um, and also just to say, it was a really great opportunity to bond with Dr. Shabazz and Kathleen and Kathleen Anderson was also there, so. All right. 
Great. So I think we can move on to our second. Oh, go ahead, Jennifer. I didn't, I got lost where we were in the agenda, um, but I wanted to show the web page. So just let me know when you're ready for that. Perfect um, time to do it. So I actually think that we still need to do some work because now we have this left side that doesn't have enough. Can you see the page? Yes. So you can click on here and it brings you to these. Wow. Um, my concern is a, it doesn't look like it's a link. So I'll, I'll talk to um, Brianna about how to kind of make that, well, now it does, but when you click on it, but when you're just looking at the page, it doesn't look like it's a link. But also I just think we need to, maybe we can put a photo of everybody here mm -hmm. or something so that people know. And then that's great. Um, what do I want to call it? Not advertisement, but publicity, because that way, if community members see you, you know, outside of the meeting somewhere and they have questions or thoughts that they can, they, it personalizes it so they can say, oh, you're from the reparations. I had a question for you, or I have an idea for you or whatever. So one day, just right here in the Zoom, I can just snip it and take photos of everyone. Yeah, that would be great. If maybe we have full attendance at our next meeting, we could just get like a, a, a picture of all of the boxes uh, together. I think that's a great idea. And I don't know if they can make that. So they can't list the resources that you showed us underneath this on here as just, or, or can, can that be made bigger somehow? I know. Well, like, that's what I was saying. I, yeah. I, it's, you, you don't really see it. And it doesn't, it also doesn't look like a hyperlink, but we should have it more pronounced, maybe this size, but I, I'll work with Brianna. Cool. Wow, that's a lot of resources though. That's really exciting. <laughs> that's, that's neat. And we can start really sending people there now, you know, um, once it, once it's where you want it to be, then we can in the reparations framers newsletter in the facebook we can all start sending people there for resources and i will so the the timeline i don't know if you all had a chance to check out the timeline i put together for the amherst sort of journey um, but there's hyperlinks in there as well so that if if you're trying to access um, one of the research reports or um, i don't know if i can did everyone have a chance to look at that let me just show really quickly and then we can move on here. So I put together this timeline here. Um, and so starting in August 2020 and coming right through to the Evanston meeting that happened. Um, and so you can click like if you click here, um, it will take you to the for the community petition that went out originally. So like everything that we've done, the symposiums, it will take you to the symposium videos. Um, it will take you to the resolution, the research reports. Um, so everything is, is linkable and easy to get to right from this timeline. <laughs> it's in the packet, but I didn't click through anything. So that's actually really great. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and I think it's a, it's a really good document to share with people who are like curious and interested because all in just a couple pages, it gives you a lot of information. Jennifer. Yeah. I just have to go back to the, the reckoning in in Boston because that filled so quickly that I actually had people emailing me that they couldn't get a seat and a lot of folks were very very interested mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if there's a way that we can try and have a well it comes it's published in January correct yeah so but what Kathy said um so there were some road bumps um and some communication challenges um, and I had a really great discussion with coffee the day or so before, um, 
it was going to happen. And what we agreed to is let's do this again um, and let's set it up so that when folks come, they can actually donate into a fund that goes toward our work um, and into our fund. Um, so yeah, I think we have an opportunity to do it, do this again, and maybe even bring in some other partners that would be interested in working on this with us and getting the word out um, and potentially doing it like at Amherst Cinema or in person somewhere, um, if, you know, depending on this virus. But yes, definitely an opportunity, Jennifer, to do it again. All right. Good to move on. Public comment. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to read the guidelines again, but um, if they're, do I have to read them again, Jennifer? Supposed to? All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. During the public comment period, I will recognize members of the public when called on. Please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the member of people who wish to speak, the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. If you'd like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. All right, so it doesn't look like there's any public comment. So we I can move. Just acknowledge our attendee. Um, sure. uh, Ella Adams is a uh, junior journalism student at UMass who is um, in a class called Covering Race, a course that's designed to investigate the ways that systemic oppression and racism have impacted the spaces around us over time. And so uh, has a final project that is, uh, that is looking at um, the work for reparations in Amherst, uh, has uh, uh, engaged with uh, Matthew Andrews and, and uh, uh, our chair uh, around these, these issues. I will try to also uh, engage uh, with her and as well as others that, um, you know, in the community that, that have had a chance to to speak with her. I think it's always important, the work of student journalists. And uh, if she would like to, to say hello to us, I think that would be excellent. But if not, we, we do thank her for her interest and coverage. All right, you encouraged her, her hand is up. <laughs> All right, Ella. Hi, I just wanna say thank you so much for um, having this. Um, I really, really appreciate all of the words that were said today. Um, they're really helpful to give me a context of all of the work that's been happening over the past year and a half. Um, and yeah, thank you for the introduction, um, Dr. Shabazz. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you a little bit later tonight. Excellent, thank you, Ella. Okay, so um, do we have any member reports? Okay. Great. Um, and in terms of upcoming agenda items and meeting schedule, is everybody here in agreement that we will meet again after the new year or is anyone feeling like we need to do so before then? Thumbs up if it's after the new year. <laughs> you got two thumbs up, okay. Hala, how about you? Okay, great. So I'll send something out um, with respect to that. Um, I did jot down some agenda items that I know, um, like revisiting the CPA, um, revisiting, um, updating everybody on whether we're getting an extension. So I have some items here. If you have any additional items, just email uh, myself and Jennifer and we'll make sure they're added. And if you'd like to add one right now, please do. Does that make our next meeting January 6th? Um, I, that would be ideal um, for, I think, if people are ready to jump back in for January 6th, which is the Thursday, 6.30, we good for that? Yeah? Okay. Yes, Yvonne. 
I am traveling the week after that. So if it, if we uh, moved it, I wouldn't be able to come. So January 6th works for me. Works. Okay. But, yeah. and then but we'll the do every week other week. So good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm also away that week too. So that works. Yeah. Does that work for you, Dr. Shabazz and Hala, the six so far? <laughs> we'll see what, you know, anything can happen, but all right, let's go with that, Jen. Okay. And then I have no topics um, that I didn't anticipate. So I can move to end this meeting at 8.24 PM. And <laughs> thank I'll you, let, everybody. <laughs> I'll let you all know if on the second night of Kwanzaa, we're gathering if you're up to it and vaxxed and, and uh, that would be like uh, uh, the 27th, I believe. Uh, it's the second night of Kwanzaa. We we hope to do something uh, public. And um, so stay tuned for more on that. Please, please send an email. I'm very interested. My family will be visiting. My kids from, you know, Aisha and everybody will be here. So that'd be great. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. And the Human Rights Commission has an event for the 26th scheduled. And okay. actually, Dr. Shabazz, I do need to check in with you about something. We will do it. Be nice if we are all together. We could maybe take a live a live photo and not these little boxes. And then I got to post a, a meeting. Yep. yep. I, I literally will have to post a meeting if everybody. You'll have be to post event. a meeting if we all come. It's it, it can't be impromptu. We just can't show up. Ah, no. Our lives. No. Our lives are dictated. I, I will post meeting. it just in case because I have to post it for the Human Rights Commission anyways. So I will just post a generic one for you guys just in case to cover it. That's crazy. Mm. Look at Hala. Like she did, she's multitasks better than anyone I've ever seen. Still working or something. It's That's amazing. <laughs> okay. It was Hopefully like, I got to think, saying, oh, you don't have to work tonight. Then it's like, psych, just come in for 8 30. Oh. But I'm like, oh. I won't complain. Oh. I won't complain. Well, okay. hopefully, we can get a, hopefully, we can get a song out of you uh, sometime, Hala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Happy Good night. Holidays and New Year, everyone. Yes, indeed. See you in 2022. Okay. Bye-bye. Happy holiday. Bye. Bye.